Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to Sarnet Television. We're here with Bob Lemieux from Professional Sales and Services taking a look at a brand new Horton Ambulance and Bob is going to take us on a little tour. So Bob, how's it going? Going good today. Good to see you, Stuart. Thanks. Well, tell us about this brand new Horton you got here. Okay. This is a Horton demonstrator model. Uh, it's a Horton model 457. It's a Type 1 4x4 ambulance on a Ford F450 chassis. Uh, the box is 157 inches long by 96 inches wide with 72 interior headroom. Um, the chassis is pretty common to the industry. Ford four-wheel drive, very quiet, nice running engine, all the good things. Now this is a, a Type 1, is the term that's, that's used correct. here in the United States. Now can you have other configurations in relation to this box size or does it have to be on a Type 1? Uh, this box size can really only go on a Type 1. We have various other sizes that can be utilized on a Type 3 or a larger Type 1 medium duty. So, but this particular one, due to the, the length and the wheelbase, only works on a Type 1 chassis. Is this also a 4x4 vehicle? It is. It's a 4x4 as well? Yes. Okay, great. Well, on the lighting side, before Bob takes us around the side of the vehicle here, we have got a variety of Whelan product on board for this particular vehicle. It is all LED, so we have 900 series light heads mounted up on the top portion of the body, and then as we move down in this area here, we've got some 700 series light heads, and we'll be turning them on, by the way, in a minute. And then up the front here, we've got the uh, 500 series TIR6s that have been mounted as well with respect to this particular vehicle. Now again, uh, some of the housing that you see here is somewhat unique to Horton. Again, Horton is an ambulance builder, so they do get housings made specifically for them, but the light heads essentially are available on SirenNet. So back to Bob and let's take a tour around the vehicle. Okay, well this is a, uh, a very basic floor plan for Horton. Oh. Uh, starts in the front. This one carries the O2 cylinder, plus uh, you could modify it slightly, put a divider in, and put small equipment there. Uh, one thing to point out with Horton is the way the doors are built. Uh, the door seal is always on the door, so that when the door is closed, it protects the latching mechanism here from the outside weather. Another thing unique to Horton is the way that the door seal is fastened. It is not glued on. It's actually run down an extrusion, so it's a slide-in product. Oh. It keeps it steady and firm. It doesn't slide around and wear that way. So, so they don't glue it then? They do not glue oh, it. It is in a channel, actually. You can see that's specially right. made in the door right. for that. And that's unique to Horton? It's uh, unique to Horton. I also noticed earlier when we were talking about this before we started shooting that the, the door itself is controlled on a spring mechanism as far as being able to open. It's not going to fly open on you. No, it, it will not. It's always controlled. We use a heavy duty gas shock with heavy duty mounting. Uh, that way it controls. You can try to slam it open and it won't go. You can't really force it to go open any faster than it will because of the pressure in the cylinder. So, a nice solid closing Very solid there. close. Now this compartment here, what would this be used for? Uh, just some small utility gear. Uh, we have a suction pump and a little 110 junction box for the shoreline up. It's protected by a little metal cage. We have a shelf. Uh, so just small miscellaneous storage in that one. Now again, light heads, of course, moving along the body and again up the top, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the 900 series. We also have 900 series scene lighting as well and we'll be turning those on just now. Now the rear compartment area, again, as you move along the body, is a dual compartment. Yes, it has a double door. Anytime we get past about 30 inches in width, we like to split the doors for two reasons. Uh, they close better, number one, and number two, you don't want it sticking out quite as far into traffic. So You've got all your bits and pieces in here to show yeah, as far as the bill goes. I, I have all my uh, little toys here to, to show to prospective customers. Uh, this compartment is set up as a fire department type compartment where there's a mounting board uh, for tools, SCBAs, any kind of thing. Uh, it's about a quarter of an inch thick, so anything can be mounted in there very secure. So the self-contained breeding apparatus could get mounted up on yes, the backboard here? Absolutely. Okay, right. The brackets could be there, any other tools, and then Plenty of space around the rear here to Plenty the of space to put bunkers and boots and those kind of items in the back. So, um, same thing with the doors. They're all gas shock controlled. 
Excellent. And the door shut easily. Now this, this vehicle has a unique suspension system on it. Yes, it does. Uh, in the past, we've historically used a lot of air ride suspensions. Um, they've come up with a better alternative now. It's a company called Liquid Spring and it's called a compressed liquid adaptive suspension system. So that's down here. It's, it's all underneath the body. It's all put on before the module is built onto the chassis for easy installation. Right. I think we can get the, one of the cameras will be able to get in and take a little quick look in there, but you can kind of configure the actual shock itself. You can see it there. Right, it, it's a large uh, hydraulic cylinder and there's a, a hydraulic tank on each side of the vehicle to run each side. It's all run by a uh, processing unit or a computer and it continually adjusts for height and balance, keeping the rig level under all conditions. It reacts very fast to bumps, twists and turns. You get very little rocking with the box. Um, I've taken a lot of demonstration rides in the last month or so with a lot of, a lot of experienced medics in the field and I've had nothing but the best reviews on the quality of the ride compared to anything they've had before. Well, we're going to do that just now. Let's see how I figure around the back. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, as we move around the back here, uh, again, 900 series light heads have been mounted around this area and then down the lower area here, we have the 600 series, we have a reverse light, we've got the turn arrow, and we have the brake light as well. So go ahead and open this up. Very smart. So let's go inside. Okay. So inside the vehicle, Bob, we've got a variety of different light heads which have been mounted up in here. We've got recessed LED lighting for obviously inside use. Can you control the intensity of these? Is this like a high-low yes, feature on they, these? Yes, they do have a high-low feature. Uh, currently with the engine and the power off, they're on a 15-minute timer. Okay which can be used for checkout lights, so you don't have to activate all the systems, but the medics can come in and, and stock and check inventories and, and do those kind of things. Um, one of the unique features to Horton, uh, Horton has been testing ambulances far and above the required standards for a number of years, and as part of that, we've been able to develop an airbag system for the passengers in the back. Okay. In this particular unit, we have two areas that have a standard airbag. One is at the side seat over here. If I sit in here, I guess if we can you see sit in there, is. and you have a three-point harness. Okay, which is and strapped And if behind. you're in a rollover accident, then you're going to have a, a pad come out and protect you from flying around in there. So I strap myself in like so. Remember the days when I was working on ambulances, we didn't have any seat belts in the back of it. That's correct. It's very common. Um, so where does the airbag come out of? It comes out from a little gray channel oh, okay, right, right here. here. Okay. Fires out into a round kind of a cushion type of thing. Right. Another thing Horton does is we have some material that we put inside our head pads. It's called a progressive resistant material. And it may not be as soft as having an all foam, but what it will do is it will have a little bit of give to it. Uh, if, if you're in an impact and your head hits this thing, it will actually protect you from a more serious injury. Oh, fantastic. So along with that, there are some parameters you have to have to have the airbags. Um, our testing with instrumented mannequins in our rollover and crash testing has indicated that we need to have a high enough area here to keep a, a, a person's hips from getting damaged, from, from moving too far and then creating more damage than good. Right. Either right. from the shoulder harness or the airbag. So there are some parameters we have to meet. In that respect. And in addition, this unit at the front has uh, a head bag and a shoulder cushion that come out. You can see the black that's, SRS. That's here and here. That's correct. And that's another one. You're strapped in, the vehicle rolls. You do have airbag protection as well as being strapped in. So. Well, again, of course, the objective is not for the vehicle to roll. That's correct. But uh, when you're out on the highways and byways, it's not just you that may have an issue, it's the folks around you. Very it nice, is. comfortable seat as well. Yes, so very good for the safety aspect. Uh, another thing, it isn't only about being in a crash, it's about having safety when it comes to biohazardous materials, which sometimes in the back of these, when people bleed and, and fluids and stuff, they, they end up with bacteria. So. 
Horton uses what we call Ageon. It's a coating, it's a silver ion activated by moisture and it kills microbes on contact. And that's on all the all cabinet the surfaces, mm -hmm. the grab rails, um, the countertops, and the switch panels. Now, is this something that has to be reapplied or something that, that no, it is once a, it's there, it's it is there. a lifetime coating mm -hmm. and uh, it is probably available, but at this point, unique to Horton. Um, now also the seat here drops down and this again is for peds. Yes, that's an option. It has a little built-in child seat. So if, if they have to strap a baby in, they have a safe way to do it. Rear facing, which is the uh, safest way to transport. Um, another feature here is the Avonite countertop. It's a solid surface. There is no you know, nothing can soak into it. And in addition, in the corners, we have coved corners instead of a 90 degree miter. So there are no seams to seal or anything like that. It's a monolithic one piece construction. So it's easy to keep it clean and sanitized. Great. So again, plenty of compartment space to store away medical equipment as and when, you've got an IV warmer in here, uh, as and when you need it, you have mm -hmm. plenty of space That's to do correct. that. Fantastic. Grab rails, of course. This, of course, is for your IV bags. That's correct. Uh, to give a little extra push when you need to do that as well. So this vehicle is set up, to, again, there's not a stretcher configuration inside it right now, but can you carry more than one patient inside uh, here? You can actually put one on the stretcher and there is room for one on the crew bench on the curb or passenger side of the vehicle. Okay. So there is uh, three point harnesses at each end. Uh, there are three seating positions, right. but without the hip bolster, you can't have a shoulder harness because it could cause serious damage to somebody's you know, upper body, neck, neck, head. Right. So seat belts are here to strap across right. or to belt people into place. Right. And again, you also have, which is a nice feature, a little writing pad yes. right here, if I pull this right. <laughs> there we go. Uh, closes off the window as well, gives a bit of privacy, yes. and you can write stuff there as That's well. Correct. Okay, okay uh, this one has, uh, in this cabinet, we've done a little built-in lockup for uh, narcotics that sure. people have to carry at right. times, so there's a little, little lock key box lock there. for that, a little yep. lock box. So these are all features that are pretty common, pretty easy to do. Um, AC, of course. AC and heat and Horton, another thing Horton believes in is we actually mount the unit down below the seat here. Uh, most builders will put it right up on top right. and do it that way. Our feeling is is that you have to pump the coolant back to heat the vehicle and we're not pushing it up a hill to get it up into the top cabinet. We're bringing the coolant back at about the same level as the engine so we get a little more efficiency with our heating system. Uh, this, the second advantage to that is hoses will occasionally down the road maybe spring a little leak. If the unit's mounted up on top, that coolant's going to go everywhere in the vehicle. If it happens here, it's rare, but if it happens, there's a drain, it's going to go right out onto the ground, so no damage to any interior Fantastic. Components. Now again, you've got plenty of cabinetry on this side here. That's correct. And again, we'll be looking on the outside, but of course these are both accessible inside and outside That's correct. as well. That's correct. We have some built-in areas for, uh, you can put glove boxes right. inside. That mm -hmm. just lifts up, pops open, yep. slide a couple of boxes in there close it off and you have a glove dispenser and a third one around the side. Fantastic. And then your electronics are inside here. Yes, the electronics. There's a light there, Stuart, if you want to oh, push, the little button. push the button. There we go. Yeah, the Horton electronics are very advanced. Um, you use a CPU at this point and it's, it's a generation three, very proven system, very mostly trouble free. Nothing is perfect in the paramedic and fire world, but it's very easy to take care of if something does happen. It's easy to trace. And additional storage below it as well. So there's That's absolutely correct. ample storage. There's no question uh, about great that. Great amount of storage without having the biggest box on the market. So Excellent. Right. Well, we've seen the inside of the vehicle. And um, one other area before we go outside is, again, you've got bunker storage, as you mentioned earlier, underneath here. And they're also on struts. So again, you can put your spine board in here, your scoop stretcher if you needed to do that as well. So plenty of storage there and nice and positive closing down. So yes. from a passenger perspective, if you do have to carry seated patients, uh, you can get 
three. Three here and possibly one more possibly on the other side, that's a total of four. Yeah. And then a cart, of course, will be already in position. That's correct. So let's go outside. So as we work away around the side of the vehicle, a bit of a jump there, um, you can uh, see additional compartment space available as well. And again, storage, full spinal board, screw stretcher, yeah. whatever the case is. And again, you can have space inside Set too. Set up for a stair chair. Uh, space above it for sea collars, foam blocks, whatever whatever they need to carry that they kind of want to keep stabilization equipment in one area. Excellent. So, and small miscellaneous, uh, the space is available, so we make it into a compartment. Sure. Flares, tools, tools you whatever know, little you need. things like that, sure. And then finally, as we move up, and of course, we've got to open the, the door. So again, access from the rear and the side in this case, the curbside access as well. And you can see another thing I can point out here sure. is uh, what we do is in the area from the front wheels to the front of the box, we actually drop the skirt of the box down by six inches and create a double step into the patient compartment. That makes it easily accessible to just climb in that way. To climb in yeah. where instead of having to step six inches higher. Right like you normally would you can so this is obviously higher there. or lower than yes. the back as we just saw a moment ago yes the f450 uh they have 19.5 inch tires so it's a taller tire the whole vehicle sits higher and one of the functions of the uh, suspension that we talked about earlier is that it does lower the rear of the vehicle uh, by four to four and a half inches to make it easier to roll the cot inside well, we'll so. have a look at that in a second let's close this over here and then finally Last compartment, let's take a look inside here. Plenty of space again for storage, and as we already saw on the inside, mm -hmm. this is accessible both in, inside That's and correct. outside as well. So let's close this. Let's step in to the cab. Why don't you okay. jump around the other side and we'll take a look. Let's fire this baby up. The switch panel is uh, very similar to the one in the back. Uh, we're gonna get a little bit of boot up time for the system. And you can now that noise, that's the suspension you, you system. Can, you can in. hear the suspension adjusting and dropping actually because okay. the rear doors are open. Okay. So once we put the power to it, it's wired to the rear doors, so the suspension drops. Okay. To be ready to load a cot. All right. So, so a nice instrumentation. Again, this is something custom built by Horton. By Horton. It's an all Horton system. Horton owns it. Horton owns the programming. It's, right. It's, it's theirs. The the switch panel is completely sealed. So if it, it are, if it's touched in the front or the back with a bloody glove mm. or a contaminated glove, it can be wiped and disinfected. There's no seams or cracks for anything to mm. accumulate in. So also you've got the uh, go light controller which is mounted here, ability to turn it on. And then of course you've got the ability to move it around, left, right, up, down, That's depending correct. what you want to do. And that obviously allows you to look at uh, street addresses, out in a field, that kind of thing, depending a how you want to Accident scenes, if they need to train a, a beam of light on a place where they're working at night and the lighting's not so good. So. Then you have your siren amplifier here, which is a Whelan product. You can just give it a quick... <coughs> perfectly working fine. Yeah, working great. fine. There we go. And again, indicator here with one or two siren speakers option on that as well. So that's quite nice too. Let's turn that mm -hmm. off for a second. Uh, auxiliary, this is just additional this functionality is, supplied by Ford, I think. These are supplied by Ford. Uh, this is a trailer brake. It's just something that That's comes the standard with the, in the package. That, yeah. Yeah. that we don't really have a lot of control And the console of. is something that they make as well? Yes, our standard console comes back to here. We've uh, added cup holders and added an additional slot for notebooks, map books, and the like. Okay. So people have that. And this is something special or different? This, this is a controller for the suspension. Uh, it has three different ride modes. It has sport, normal, and comfort. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Okay. You know, and then it has some height adjustments, low being all the way down, medium low is a pass-through point, normal is the ride height that you would have going down the road, and then this has an over-height feature which comes into play if you're going through a deep rain gutter or any area where you have any fear of possibly dragging the rear end because of the angle, you can actually raise this up and it goes over height. Okay. Wow. As long as the vehicle's under 10 miles per hour. Or a stationary it, even, would it do that too? Or stationary. Okay. 
and it will actually lift the back end so you can gain additional clearance. Okay. Um, once the vehicle attains 15 miles per hour, if you haven't reset it yourself, the system will reset to the normal mode. Right. So it takes, your, your medics need to be thinking about their patients. They don't need to be thinking, you know, as much about operating the vehicle. So we try to make it as simple as possible. Very, very comfortable for them to do that. Now on the uh, control panel here, you've obviously got red, which is your emergency warning That's lights. Correct. And then you have green, which are your auxiliary lighting. Yes. So you've got your left flood lights, yes. which we'll take a look at. And you've got a right flood as well. Now these are compartment lights we're talking about. The you've also exterior got uh, left and right. Yes. Yeah. And then you have your rear loading lights yes. too. So they again, they will come on as you push those mm -hmm. fog lights. Again, self-explanatory in the front. Mm -hmm. And then on the warning side, you've got a master which will turn all of the emergency warning lighting on, yes. or you can select if you want to have different flashing lights on, depending on how you want to set that up. So we'll push this. And again, now that's indicating that uh, the warning. That's that indicating that the doors are open. No, it, it wants me to set the parking brake to speed up the idle when the emergency warning lights come on. Okay. And what this also does is because the vehicle is stationary and parked, it automatically reverts to the secondary mode. Okay. So it shuts down some of the lighting. Okay. Uh, all you have to do if you want your full lighting is you just have to change that to primary. Or put it into gear, would that also change Or put it, it into gear and it will go back go to back the up. normal mode. So now everything is on. Okay. Um, you can also, from this switch panel, you can control your rear climate. It's a climate control system. You can change the temperature, turn it on or off. You can turn rear domes on uh, and dim them. Mm -hmm. um, the blue are just strictly programming things. You know, you have a clock in your display, you have a trip mileage indicator in the display, uh, you have diagnostics built in, and you have a change display and a warning reset. That's the button I hit when all the noise came on. So it gives you warnings, but it allows you to cancel the warnings. All right, not to distress the patient or That's concern. correct. Correct. Change display right now. The default here is a volt and amp meter with the time of day and the trip mileage. Time of day can be either 12 or 24 hour format. Uh, if you want to change the display, you can get the inside temperature of the module. You can get the outside ambient temperature. You can get your line oxygen pressure. You can get your tank pressure to show you how much contents you have. And it goes to RPM and then back to the voltage. Back to the voltage. And the rear switch panel has exactly the same, same functions, functionality. but it defaults to a slightly different um, place. So Great. We also have map lights. Uh, we have a red or clear or off. So you have some nice close-up reading for, dome for lights. For nighttime use. Sure. Right. Well, again, a very nicely configured vehicle indeed from the gang over at Horton. Very impressive. So let's take a look at the emergency lighting around the vehicle. Okay. Well, there you have it, a look at a brand new Horton Ambulance on a Ford F450 chassis. That's it's Bob telling us all about it. Really appreciate it, Bob. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you uh, 
going ahead and putting this on the air for us. Yeah, no worries. So go ahead and check out Sinet Television. I'm Stuart, he's Bob, and thanks for watching.